I had the opportunity to find some amazing talents from my borough of the Bronx. What's up? It's Jerome Lamar, and I am at Uniqlo, preparing for the Bronx launch. When Uniqlo asked me to partner with them, it was the best timing to give them a platform that I was given. What I love most about this is that it's unisex. Men and women can wear it, and anyone can look good in it. Mix it up, mix it down, and put it into any wardrobe you want to. A styling DJ. What I love about the Uniqlo piece is that it provides the perfect foundation. It really allows your personality, it allows your accessories to really shine through. All of my clients are dynamic and they have different styles, so I feel like Uniqlo fits into all of their lifestyles. People are focused on health and fitness. Well, the Bronx is definitely not the place where, that people think of when it comes to wellness. The last four or five years, I've been working towards a new identity for the Bronx, by the Bronx, mm -hmm. when it comes to that, so that people can start shifting their idea of themselves and, and how they see themselves with health. An amazing, extremely talented woman who can illustrate pretty much anything. I've always grown up in the Bronx, born there. I think as an artist, as a creative person, it gives you fresh eyes to really appreciate all the differences and see the differences and wow. see how you're different from everyone, how everyone is different from you, and it reflects in your work. A luxury floral designer. I love the fact that I meet different people every time I work on a project, from fashion designers to artists to nurses, anyone. At the end of the day, I take away uh, new experiences, how to work on the next project, how to deal with clients, and continue to grow within the business that I'm doing. And a Bronx site that travels the world to capture amazing imagery. What I've always been fascinated by was the 70s, mm -hmm. especially like the Caribbean, like in Jamaica in the 70s, the whole Rasta Shata mm -hmm. kind of vibe. So that's more so like, I guess, my inspiration or mm -hmm. my influence on the way I dress. An advocate for the arts, the Bronx Museum. I really loved about growing up in the Bronx and I think this is uh, the part of the Bronx that I love best is the people. My best friends growing up were black, Hispanic, from Peru, Vietnam, like Mexico, all over the world. That people think about the Bronx is like when you're from the Bronx you lack something, mm. but, but really it's you don't lack anything because you have access to the world, you know? And the trillest chef I've ever met. I aspire to be very well respected in my lane, in my industry, especially in the Bronx, and then hopefully we'll take that globally. Cooking was never like a childhood passion of mine. It wasn't something like a lot of people like aspire to be like a firefighter, right? And then they, they end up doing that because they manifest it. But I always had a passion for watching my mother cook and tasting her food. So for me now, I'm trying to elevate food because it's always like they say, right? Like your, your parents try to give you more like than what they had, right? So I try to do that with food through what I'm doing, but for everybody else, right? So like growing up, I never ate at fine dining restaurants. I didn't know what good food was, like besides home cooked meals. Right. Right, when we were going out to eat, we were going to like the local um, fast food joint. Right. And whatever, so for me now, growing up, I had to make a decision and that decision was like, what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? So I chose something that I could do no matter where I'm at in the world and no matter how bad times are, and something that people always need, right? Describe your sound and your style as DJ Soda Pop. It's the um, really cool thing is I approach DJing similarly to the way I approach styling. Like, it doesn't have to, it just has to feel good. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. styling, it doesn't like necessarily on paper, it doesn't have to look a certain way. It just has to feel good the way that you pair things together. And I feel like with DJing, like my music, it has a lot of texture, it has a lot of depth. Um, mm. um, I try to stay away from the top 40s and play like deep cuts. I'm into like Afro, tribal music that really makes you feel. And dance. Exactly. Exactly, and dance. So that's how that's how I um, approach it. It's, it's very dynamic, multicultural. It makes you feel, it appeals to, to everyone. Mm. So tell me a little bit about where you grew up and where you're from in the Bronx. I grew, I've always grown up in the Bronx, born there, and uh, I live in the Northeast Bronx in the Pelham Bay section, right near Pelham Bay Park, which we're a lot neighbors. of people know about. And we're neighbors, mm -hmm. which we found out. Uh, always loved it there. Uh, it was kind of my launching pad into mm. wanting to get into being an artist because I remember mm. going to Pelham Bay Station, which is right there, mm -hmm. and seeing that six train pass and seeing all the beautiful oh, wow. work on the trains. Yeah. <laughs> that was really a, a springboard for me because as a five-year-old, we would, we would walk up to it mm -hmm. and I'd look at it and be like, that's what I want to do, that's what I want to do. Wow. Man, for me, growing up in the Bronx was uh, very special. 
um, the, the kids I grew up with, the, the neighborhood I grew up in was very family oriented. So it's like everybody knew each other. You know, I still pass by there now. And a lot of my like grandmother's friends that still wow. live there, when they see me, they're like, hey, you know, Pito, come here, I want to talk to you. So, you know, growing up here for me was, uh, it, 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 was it wasn't easy because, you know, you, you're put in positions where, um, you know, you need to defend yourself or you need to stand strong, you need to stand your ground. Um, so like, obviously, it, it, that's, those kind of qualities are instilled in you just as you grow older. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about where you're from in the Bronx. I grew up in Soundview, but I actually moved to Pelham Bay. Um, still in the Bronx, but uh, I just relocated to Pelham Bay not too long ago. What started your love for floral design? Uh, growing up with my grandparents, I would always be in a garden. So my passion for, it really started from plants and mm -hmm. from there went into flowers. Tell me about yourself. Um, I'm Kadeem, from the Bronx, born and raised here. Uh, what part of the Bronx? 170th, right off the Grand Concourse. Nice. Yeah, South Bronx. Um, I'm a street travel photographer and full-time model agent. So I represent male models. Nice. Yeah. So growing up in the Bronx um, definitely had its difficulties. I don't want to like, you know, like go over that. But I think um, my parents are from Bangladesh and they really tried to like give me a lot of their culture. Um, so like being growing, so it was like a very conservative Bengali uh, like family that I grew up in. But I like listened to a lot of like Bollywood and Bengali music growing up. And that's something like my parents really loved. But it, one thing that I really love, loved about growing up in the Bronx, and I think this is uh, the part of the Bronx that I love best, is the people. Mm -hmm. um, so, like my friends, my best friends growing up were black, Hispanic, from Peru, Vietnam, right. like Mexico, all over the world. And one thing about the Bronx that is like, that people think about the Bronx is like when you're from the Bronx you lack something mm. but but really it's you don't lack anything because you have access to the world you know Absolutely. like it's at your fingertips and it's it's your friends it's it's everything around you and like our sh perspectives and our ideas and who we are, we are are really shaped by that you've been traveling quite a bit so some what are some of the places that you've traveled recently well, I just got back yesterday from North Africa. I um, ended up surfing over there for Whoa. about a week. Yeah, it's, um, it's you know, my inner uh, desire is really to, to put that energy I have and put it to a specific use, which is adventure. Mm -hmm. And my last adventure was in Morocco um, pretty much surfing for a whole week. Wow. Yeah. How can you bring that experience back here to the Bronx? I know you have your brand born. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about how you can uh, connect the two. Yeah, well, born is really a representation of, of the Bronx, but it's also a representation of me and the world. Um, as I see myself more as a global person, uh, which has been influenced by the Bronx. And by default, me living here, I bring the world here also in my perspective and a different perspective um, uh, than, you know, than you will find in the Bronx. So Born is really a representation of the very best of me, a global view and with a Bronx soul. Yeah. <laughs> How would you describe what it is that the Bronx brings to the table and the, on a larger scale, right? Right, definitely. So I've, I think I've been in a lot of rooms. I went to Kenyon College in Ohio and I've been in a lot of rooms where I'm like the only brown person in that room. And when I was in college, I didn't have like that, that confidence and also the Bronx wasn't like buzzing like it is. It wasn't. It's so-called burning, how they always think of it. Right? Exactly, exactly. So um, the Bronx wasn't, buzzing so I didn't have like that confidence but that you know like I, I had inside me because it kept being suppressed and suppressed but um, so but what I 
if I had to tell myself anything is like if you are from the Bronx and if you are like in a room and you're like the only person from the Bronx, you're, it's most likely that you are one of the smartest, most creative, most vibrant like person in the room. You know, you are, you are going to be because it's just like the Bronx has all of these things and that's what's inside you, you know? We carry it with us wherever we go. Yeah. I mean, it was cool. Like the Bronx is all I really know growing up. So like I can't really like compare it to anything else. But like mm -hmm. growing up in the Bronx, especially like in the nineties, looking back now compared to like how everything is now was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I wish I could like go back in time and like just remember like hanging out in front of my building, barbecues in the summertime. And I grew up in a Caribbean neighborhood, so mm -hmm. it was really cool. So yeah, yeah, growing up in the Bronx was dope. Amazing. I love it. I still live there, so it's cool. This is home. Yeah. For me too. Exactly. Um, so what are your thoughts on this new identity that the Bronx is accumulating? Um, I have like different feelings about it, honestly, mm -hmm. just because I've seen what the new change have did to Brooklyn, mm -hmm. now Harlem, so now I'm afraid like it's going to hit the Bronx. Well, it is hitting the Bronx, but it it's is. like slowly hitting it. Not, it's not hitting it as fast as it hit Brooklyn and, Brooklyn and Harlem because right. People still aren't aware of the convenience of the Bronx, but now and they're the getting beauty of the Bronx. yeah. Now they're getting aware of it, and so now yeah. it's happening. So like, it's a good thing because of the there are changes like Unique will come into the Bronx, which mm -hmm. is cool. But then there are some bad things about it that I don't want to discuss. But right, <laughs> it's it's cool. It's cool. It makes sense. Did growing up in the Bronx inspire the way you prepare meals? Um yeah yeah honestly like like. I'm not your typical looking chef, right? So when people see me and they talk to me and they ask me questions about what I do and I tell them I'm a chef, they kind of like don't picture it, right? Uh -huh. But when I, I don't know if you've, obviously you've seen them, but the people who haven't seen them, when they look at one of my dinners, they see I bring that raw like vibe to the dinner, you know, um, yeah, I mean, hip hop, R&B music, um, the food, we keep it like real simple, but like we mm -hmm. still have that like, you know, uh, urban flair touch to the dishes, you know, right. my dinners, are very, very, I would say, Bronx. We love that. Anything Bronx is good. <laughs> You're right, though. I mean, for me, being born and raised here, like, doing That's these amazing. dinners it, in my hometown, like, in a spot like My Haven Bar and Grill or, you know, in a spot on 140th from Willis, Motley Kitchen, I, that's my hood. That's where I grew up at. Mm -hmm. To be able to come here and do something positive and, like, Show have, a different perspective. And show it to everybody. Yeah, you know, and exactly. Bring a different perspective of, like, what people perceive um, the Bronx to be like. Right, I love it. Because it's a beautiful place. We need to show it. We need to show it off. I love it. And I'm, and that's my mission right now with, with food though, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously everybody has their lanes, you know what I'm saying? And, and what their passions are. Mine is food, so I'm bringing that, I love it. that like feel through food. I love it. Did you like go to any um, like specific art schools or? I did. When I was uh, about 12, I had an opportunity to go to the High School of Art and Design. That's where I'm I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, so we could all talk about this. So, you know, despite loving where you live, I think it was a good thing to kind of get out, get out too, Bronx, a little yeah. bit and meet different people. And uh, I, well, it was such a great experience. Wow. It opened my eyes up to so many things. I love it. And they have Whoa. a new building now. Yeah, it's a totally different it atmosphere. It's beautiful. It's really nice. Wow, you didn't even know I that. I can't believe it. We're not going to talk about years, right, when we graduated? No, we're I'm keeping fine. that. We didn't okay, we're just <laughs> I majored in illustration <laughs> there, but wow. what did you major? I did fashion design. Okay. Yeah. It was tough it was, picking a major there because you wanted to, you had that chance to be able to learn everything. everything. <laughs> and when you want a sponge, it was such a great time. This is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get a little deeper. Let's Tell me it. about what was it like being so stylish? Because, you know, being a style kid in the Bronx is, yeah. is sometimes overlooked. So give me an example of how it was for you growing up in the Bronx. Well, I love the Bronx. I grew up in Soundview. And the cool thing about the Bronx, like, versus, like, with the city, like, you, we know there's that transportation. Like, mm -hmm. I live by, I had to take the BX39 to the 6th <laughs> train. And you know, once you're out in the city, you got to stay out because there's, like, really no coming back. So it's, like, you had to style accordingly. So, like, me being from the Bronx, it really did affect the way that I dressed because, like, I knew, like, I'm wearing a heel, 
you know, I'm wearing this jacket. Okay, I'm wearing this during the day, but I gotta be able to turn it out at night. So it made you, it made me, no, seriously, yes. being in the Bronx and doing that commute, it really made you dress like really smart. Mm -hmm. You had to dress for your entire life, essentially, yeah. because, you know, there was like that commute. So, um, no, just really being versatile in that and like carrying like an extra pair of earrings mm -hmm. or like a different shoe to quickly switch out of or a big bag so to make it work i'm laughing because i'm from soundview too yeah so that same commute exactly the 39 to the six train stay in the city all day yeah and being prepared for the entire exactly. day exactly or whatever life throws at whatever you. life throws at you maybe you have to go to a fashion, to a fashion show, show right or a, a movie premiere or something like that but yeah. being prepared and presentable exactly which is what i like about um, yeah. You know, well, like if I wear a Uniqlo, you can wear it all day, right? Exactly. Here in the Bronx, specifically the South Bronx. So that was revolutionary for me because I was exposed to everything and everyone, not just an ethnic group, um, Dominican American uh, group. It really exposed me to the world. world. That's the common thing I think in the Bronx that we're discovering is that. We are global here. Although the globe uh, doesn't acknowledge us, we have something to offer because we are representing a forward-thinking way of looking at society um, in our own way, of course. Yeah, I agree. I think that um, in many ways, it rep it's been representing that, the way of culture, art, and it's really what has now um, given the world uh, a vision, right? Um, and, and, and just energy to continue to create. It's, it's really the art forms from the Bronx that have created that. Absolutely. Um, for me, the Bronx has always been really cool. My grandparents uh, moved there from the South, and I have a lot of different uh, friends of different ethnicities in the Bronx, so it's like a built-in pot, so it's really cool. Different people, different vibes. How would you describe your personal style? I hate that question. <laughs> um, I don't really know how to describe my personal style, honestly. Mm -hmm. But my inspiration, what, what I'm, what I've always been fascinated by was the '70s, mm -hmm. especially like the Caribbean, like in Jamaica in the '70s, the whole Rasta Shata mm -hmm. kind of vibe. So that's more so like I guess my inspiration or mm -hmm. my influence on the way I dress. Can you describe your style in three words? Uh, effortless easy and functional. Um, I would say easy, active, and forward. Like I went into Uniqlo recently this month, and but my friends were always telling me, you gotta go there, you would really like it. So mm -hmm. I happened to be near one, we stepped in, and I was really, really surprised. I saw these pants, and I love them, because the <laughs> color is so beautiful. Um, I'm not much of an accessories person, so I usually go for things that are colorful or have a nice texture to them. So linen is always like a go-to for me. And I saw these and the quality was really, really nice. Uh, and I found that the stuff was just so easy to put together. I didn't have to buy six pieces. I could buy two pieces, incorporate it in, and it felt like, okay, I'm going to have these for a while. And the price point, the price point was really fair and reasonable. And, you know, I mean, come on. Got a stretch of dollar. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay for me to admit that, right? Okay. Like with me, like I'm a stylist by day and DJ by night, and I don't have time to go home. What I love about the clothes is I can leave in this outfit and then just style it, and it'll take me into evening easily, like that. So I love how versatile it is. I love the alter ego moment. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm gonna do everything as dualities. Exactly. How would you describe DJ Soto Pop style versus Sophia style? Oh. Even though you're wearing this day to the day to evening look. See, it's it is interconnected, but it is but it is different at the same time. I would feel like during the day I'm a little bit more clean and puppy. Um, but then during evening it's just like crazy, like I wear different color wigs and I'm just like crazy and obnoxious. And it's fun, I love, I love it. it. Sophia slash soda pop. Okay, right? so like the duality. The duality, yes, it is. I'm a working girl. Um, so I'll wake up and I'll have a client appointment. I work primarily with female professionals. So um, say if I have a client and I'm shopping for her, um, I'll wake up early in the morning and I'll. It's just super clean, minimalistic. And what I love about the Uniqlo piece is that it provides the perfect foundation. Right. Do you know what I mean? It really allows your personality. It allows your accessories 
to really shine through. But I'm really into shoes and accessories, so I love how simple Uniqlo pieces are because it really allows me to like trick it out otherwise. I love the color palette. Like every season, they come out with really beautiful earth tones every season. What I love most about Uniqlo, right, they have something for any type of occasion or any type of activity, mm. right? If you're looking to work out, you can go there and you're gonna get comfortable workout clothes, right? And everything that they have is high quality. Affordable prices though. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel like you're going to the store and, and you know, you're gonna like drop a bag in there on um, right. just four items. You can go in there and, and really leave with six or seven outfits, mm -hmm. a coat, and, and their weather tech it's is insane. For your life. It's That's clothing for cool. life. Comfort, uh, a little bit of elegance, um, and always a little element, an element of delight. I can always be comfortable, but yet look very professional and clean and simple. And I love that about it. It's just like, I feel like I can be myself. I love that. <laughs> what are your thoughts about your outfit? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I am embodying like the sun right now. <laughs> I feel really great, very comfortable. Um, very like urban, but you know, like elegant and, and it just goes with who I am. <laughs> what I love most about Uniqlo, first I would say the colors. And I like to do like monochromatic looks. So every time I want to find something that just matches, mm -hmm. just I go to Uniqlo, that's my go-to, especially because they, they have every single color red, every single color blue. So I always go there for my colors and then quality. The quality is really good, like the cashmere sweaters. These pants, I would never buy these pants anywhere else, but like putting these on today, I was like, oh, this is actually really, really comfortable. Like I could even like run in these. <laughs> so yeah, the quality and color for me is really good. The colors that they have, yes. color options, color Very options. Surprising. So the quality is amazing. The for quality the is amazing and the price is very reasonable. You can stack up and fair. do a whole wardrobe. Yeah. Seasonally. And not throw it away. You can hold on to the you know the goods because they last long. I really love Uniqlo and I like them because I feel like they sort of are in tune with the times. The Bronx represents the future. I'm Aisha. I am John. Yo, I'm Kadeem. I'm Sophia Hyacinth, aka DJ Soda Pop. I am True Cooker. And I am Marilena. I am Henry. And this is my life in life wear. 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 This is life in life wear. <laughs>